All right. All right, so I'm going over my charts for motor wave a little bit here. So figuring things out. Um, here the outer footprint. I should draw my SDP levels on this side. And I see, um, for me, I can see levels reactions against these and uh, how the footprint is shaping up to be against there. I do have, I'm going to play with this screen here, but this is the hourly again. I can maybe flip on a five minute or 15 minute for intraday chart. Um, but I throw in a volume profile and market profile chart on this side as well. I do see like the IBs. So this is like the IB, this green bar, the volume profile. I do like to have the IB high and low and then the IB extensions as well. So Section one, two, and three, and this is auto populate as well. It's more like secondary levels, like you can throw in there. And of course, the time and sales. I have mine set to, I think it's fifty. Now minimum trade is twenty uh, for my time and sales, and then I also have them auto highlighted for the bigger trades um, when they come in. Usually, I take that into into consideration. I'm taking long or short. If I see uh, usually bigger buyers at that level, I like to say I want to buy with them. Uh, then I'll also have tick strike, which is like a an audible form of tape, and I'll use that for like the smaller trades because it can move so fast. And then on my trade chart, I usually have this guy. Here, I'm not sure you can see that on my recording. Fisher sell it. Yeah, okay, well, you see that. Um, so this is five minute. I just kind of resize this. Perfect. So yeah, Android. So this is can be all these could be done on Quantar, and you feel like I can open up Quantar for you later, and you can uh, run through that with you and make sure you have the same setup as me, or I can send you my old template for Quantar. That helps. You can just auto populate that to your chart. Okay, you can make sure you have all the same settings. So I think your power trades is actually a little bit different. I think you got some. Uh, I think you did get some delta triggers that are a little bit lighter. I think yeah, I think it signaled. Okay, yeah, it is 450 that Bumble had used, and it worked for me as well. But in any case, so uh, this is this is my trade chart typically. So I'm on the five five minute, and uh, I have everything. So I trade out the five minute. Um, this is my entry chart essentially. Typically, I would have like the two K volume. Um, I'm gonna try that out next. Try that out next, maybe next week. Uh, place a two K volume of the footprint. Um, but right now, I like the the confluence of the five minute, five minute, and the hourly so far. And what I want to see there is. Sell bounces that have the same time frame continuity, so within the five and the hourly. So I'm trying to bring this chart up here. So it's seven thirty. The seven thirty short. <clears throat> oh, we're out of time there. I gotta pop this up. So the weird thing about motive wave is you have to tell it how many bars you wanted to update <laughs> one sec <clears throat> there you go 
trying to bring up that short if I can. So I really had a, the 9.13, was it? Yeah, right around here. Seven, or 7.30, sorry. 7.14, okay, yeah. So this is why I shorted, actually. As you can tell, those two trades there below the hourly footprint. So the hourly footprint set up here. I see the big sell and bounce on the hourly. And I'm like, okay, I'm thinking we are past the 175%, the 890 area, when I short my one of my SDPs. I did see we have a huge sell and balance with negative delta. I look now forward to my footprint and I see, you know, where is that located on my chart as well, like on the footprint. And you did have some sell and bounce below that. So you have some shorts or big old zero on the five minute. So I took that and then paired up with some more sale and bounce down below April 800. Um, I mean, a good example there. But essentially you want to find the, you know, the matching up of, of said sale and balances or the fade, fade the sell and bounces, if you will. And same thing can be said for the longs. Is, um, if you think about longs, then you want to make sure that you are in the same direction as the big buyers. So I'm trying to find a trade. So eight, nine o'clock, it's gonna scroll. Nine o'clock area, let's see where it's at. One of them here, at 8, 840. Around there, so this is around around the big buy imbalance at seven forty four. Then I said the seven oh two level. Um, you did see that big buy imbalance here, but like I said, you want to want to match up these levels together, and then you take that trade along with it. Um, usually, you can also fade the extremes, like we had earlier today, where you had. Big sales coming in with positive delta, so you you sell it into an area and you have positive delta, like coming to the spot, and the rallying back up and against 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 a key level like two thousand seven hundred. Um, but you want to make sure that you have that stack with you, and when you make that is looking at the tape, looking at the tape, and you want to find big buyers stepping in as well, or at least uh, eco with the stack. So I'm not I'm not blindly taking. Every single trade that I see that's like a you know, negative or a positive delta into a you know from a short, you get a heavy short, and then you go long uh, with positive delta. This means you take it every single time. But I to confirm with the tape if I see buyer stepping in, or if I hear it or see it on tick strike lighting up, then I will take the trade. I think here as well as one of them. So this is a coming to a. It was a short, short coming into it, and then a long. Uh, this is a sell, sell and balance, clear auction. Trying to find another example, 10 o'clock. Yeah, sell and balance here again at the zero, so in 10 o'clock. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah, in short, you wanna make sure that they are in line with each other. Um, tending can be set on the rally up. So if you see longs can, getting a recovering and they have a negative delta, you can, you can seek a short trade, um, coming into the zone, but they don't always work out. They work the best when they're up against a like previous sell inbound. So again, we'll look at the hourly and see where it's at. Make sense. Yeah, I'm still configuring these charts out, um, but so far it's working, it's working really well. And to be, be patient with your setup, I think uh, everyone new to the footprint can be a little challenging. Um, one thing that I, I do like on Motive Wave is that it will auto populate. You have these uh, red lines and green lines, uh, you have resistance and support lines. So green is obviously support and then red and they'll auto populate based on the footprint. It's basically it's a uh, sale and buying balances. 
Um, same thing. Same, same thing can be can be seen on Quant Tower. You just have to have your set your sell and balance to like two hundred instead of three hundred, and set your set your level to like one instead of two zones. It's one zone. I think it's pretty similar. So, when you usually come up into those zones, kind of retested that. Uh, this one you, you seek, you know, another short or long opportunity. Um, like for example, here we did have a on five minute here we did have a sell and balance completed auction. You got a big old zero donut, right? It's going to auto populate as a resistance, so that's a possible short there. And then coming into a previous uh, the same level on the way up, you want to see some buyer step in, and they did, right, right underneath the previous resistance line. And then that possible area to get long or seek longs as you break that level higher. Oh, this is a pretty example for the. When you saw a sell, you have a positive, or you have a uh, buying balance with a negative delta or positive delta. I think we're selling, and this is a buying balance with positive delta. I just want to here, yeah. Took one of those examples on the five minute footprint. Positive delta, buy and balance. And uh, this is a good area, the scalp. That was around what, almost 50 points, almost. Yeah, about 30 something. But yeah, usually I can see this too. Like, um, you can also see like this box. Study yeah, tools. Let's go marker. So you kind of use like the footprint as well to see, uh, you know, possible possible support levels. So these areas of like buying balances, like stacked, you can see like support or buyers are trying to defend this area. So you can try, you know, possibly scalp into that into that area once it retouches. And then, yeah, pretty swift. Nothing too crazy, but it's whatever. What a wave now. I'm still looking into possibly making some other adjustments. I still have to play about this some more. And it's much of a cleaner look looking at the hourly hourly footprint. It's like super, super clean. I mean, it's a little more telling. And obviously, uh, it'd be easier to, to see bottom and see tops. You see, it gets pretty obvious um, to a certain degree. I mean, you have these areas we can fade or long off of, you know, buy and balances here. Look to short, they fail it, right? And at the end of the day, I mean, that was like the end of the, end of the rally. They had a huge buying balance up against this uh, 12.55. Got pretty close. I think with the 63, was it? Something rather, 65, 67. And also you sell and bounce, of course. Seems, yeah. Uh, and Dark Knight, the imbalance of values are. So these are a little different. I, I think I can go over the, what they all mean. I guess I mean, you have their standard you know, bid ask, and then you have on the right is all delta, right? And this, I had that set up. Um, these are the deltas in the boxes, Dark Knight. And these are just the bid ask against each candle. This is the candle, right? And you have the, uh, 
bit ask on both, and then you have the deltas. <clears throat> yeah, this is something that Quandart does not have. I feel like they have, you can do delta, but it gives you delta per price level, but not delta per candle. And if he did, I don't think it is that's clean. Pretty, uh, pretty easy setup. So uh, for now, five minute, five minute and the hourly. And then I'm playing with the uh, 512 chart as well. Five take, uh, five, five twelve tick lately. I've been seeing this kind of like harmonic I should say uh, moon phases. <laughs> this is for Ting. Move that. Uh, <laughs> yes, it's zigzag. Not harmonic, but zigzag. It is form of a harmonic. Um, I'm just seeing it as points of possible mean reversion areas. And it happened quite nicely twice at uh, the end of the day. It was here. I called out there, and then harmonic dropped. I called along here. I mean, this is just like speculation. Uh, I'll see how they are next time. I like it though. Yeah, <laughs> harmonics are like crab and some kind of monster or something. I don't know. Um, I will share. Some of you have Motive Wave. I know Lynch. Remember, remember guys, remember Lynch? <laughs> he was a. Yeah, I missed that guy. Anyway, he. Uh, his Motive Wave. I'm going to shoot him a, a message and see uh, if we get some of his chart setups. This is looking pretty nice. But yeah. Some nuances with uh, Motive Wave a little bit. Is that like you can't. I'm trying to still figure out how to draw lines and, or like draw like price lines and have it come across all of the same symbol. It would do that for some reason. Like I can't draw a price line here and it will show up on the other chart. Like somehow it doesn't compute. Like I have to do it by hand each time. So it's just a weird thing. But yeah, that's my setup so far. Um, you guys posted on anything new that develops but yeah any questions uh i'll just turn it off in a minute sounds good see you later <laughs> 